Welcome to the Technology and Energy Panel Talk on the occasion of the ISH Digital 2021. Today we've also invited some experts from the heating sector. Specifically, we'll discuss a technology that's of great importance, especially in connection with the German government's hydrogen strategy. We're talking about fuel cells. Our topic today is how fuel cell heating works and what contribution it makes to achieving the climate targets in existing buildings. The title of today's panel is The Fuel Cell – Hydrogen for the Heating Revolution. I would like to welcome my guests to the studio. This is Dieter Kehren. He is head of the department CHP Fuel Cell as well as the Forum Smart Heating and the Department Energy Management Systems at the BDH. Mr. Alexander Daunsteiner is a member of the BDH Department CHP Fuel Cell. My first question is for you, Mr. Daunsteiner. The topic of hydrogen and fuel cells is on everyone's lips at the moment. Some of the member companies organized in the BDH also offer fuel cell heating systems. What exactly are they? How does this technology work? A fuel cell heating system is simply a system for the cogeneration of heat and power, just as we used to see as motorized cogeneration units. However, this combustion engine technology isn't really used anymore and has been replaced by the fuel cell. The function of the fuel cell, and thus also its great advantage, is that it first reforms, that is, converts hydrogen directly from the natural gas and then converts this hydrogen with the oxygen from the air into energy, that is, electricity and heat. And the whole thing happens silently and without any moving parts. This is referred to as cold combustion, which is a highly efficient, direct conversion of natural gas into electricity and heat. There are different fuel cell heating system designs. What are they? In the heating market, we distinguish between two different technologies. There are the low temperature fuel cells, which are polymer fuel cells that are very widely used. There are already many thousands of devices in use. These work at temperatures around 80 degrees Celsius inside the unit, which is a relatively low temperature, hence the name low temperature fuel cells. And then there are the high temperature fuel cells. These are ceramic fuel cells. They work internally, well wrapped and insulated of course, at temperatures above 600 degrees Celsius up to more than 800 degrees. They are also ideal for use in existing buildings where the temperatures in the heating circuits are high, so the temperature is a decisive factor. So these two groups are distinguished in the heating market. There are also other technologies, but they don't play a big role for us. Mr. Kehren, the fuel cell heating system not only produces heat, it can also produce electricity. What's the significance of this, especially in view of the climate targets and a changing heating market? As part of the energy revolution, we are seeing a change in the energy system. We want to electrify heat generation and transport. That means we'll have a higher demand for electricity. And at the same time, we want to generate electricity from renewable sources, but these are volatile and difficult to control. We've discussed this topic already in our talk on energy management, where we said that we need new solutions such as load management and other networking technology. But the fuel cell is another solution for this, because it can generate heat and electricity in a decentralized way. The electricity can either be consumed by the user, in which case it does not burden the grid at all, or it can be fed into the grid and support the grid. So the fuel cell heating system has a grid stabilizing effect. A fuel cell heating system can also generate heat and electricity from green hydrogen. It can continue to generate when the sun and wind are not there and cover the so-called residual load. And this is another important contribution to the energy revolution. Mr. Kehren mentioned green hydrogen. Mr. Daunsteiner, how is fuel cell heating aligned with the German hydrogen strategy and what prospects does that offer? Um, 
If you look at the German hydrogen strategy, which was adopted recently, there are two components in the heating market. That's not really enough. There's still considerable need for development. The heating market can and will contribute much more to climate protection with hydrogen. But the fuel cell technology is basically predestined for hydrogen because it is actually a hydrogen technology by nature. It generates electricity and heat from hydrogen and oxygen in the air. Today, in the absence of a hydrogen infrastructure, we still do this with natural gas. This means converting natural gas into hydrogen. Of course, this would be completely eliminated if the hydrogen infrastructure was built up in the heating market as well. This also underlines the importance of hydrogen in the heating market. So the technology is pretty much ideally suited to the direct use of hydrogen without the complex task of reforming it from natural gas. Mr. Kehren, if an end consumer now decides to buy a fuel cell heating system, what government subsidies can they claim? In February of this year, KFW program 433 was revised. This is very positive, because in the past you had to submit two funding applications to get the maximum funding. Today the end customer has to submit only one application. The allocated subsidy is divided into a basic amount for the system and an amount dependent on the electrical output that's produced. If you look at a typical system on the market, with 750 watts of electricity output, which is relatively common, the end customer actually gets more than before and saves one application form, so that's very positive. And specifically, how does the BDH support this? We are active on two fronts. On the one hand, we are involved in the Fuel Cell Initiative, or IBZ. We provide one of the two spokesmen there, Andreas Lücke, our managing director. The other is Dr. Tim Kehler, who comes from Zukunft Gas, which is also participating in this panel. The other aspect is the Department of Cogeneration of Heat and Power, where fuel cell heating is an essential component. From my point of view, the main mission of our department is to highlight the advantages to the energy system that we've just described in the field of electricity, decentralized generation, grid relief and covering residual load. But the fact that fuel cells can be part of the German hydrogen strategy must also be emphasized more in public and political discourse. However, you can also see that we already have double-digit growth rates for fuel cell heating systems. So we are well on our way there. At this point, I would like to thank you very much for the information, gentlemen. We have now reached the end of our program. As we have seen, the fuel cell combined with hydrogen is a central issue for the energy and heating transformation. Thank you. And thank you for coming to the studio. I wish you an exciting ISH Digital 2021.